what is the difference between a sociopath, a psychopath, and a narcissist? Here to answer this intense question is Dr. Romani. Help us out here. Well, it's, you know, again, there's a lot of overlap, but the fact is a lot of people are using these terms interchangeably. Mm. They and should they be? Sociopath, they psych- no, they no. shouldn't. They're okay. different things, okay? One rule of thumb to remember right off the bat, every psychopath is narcissistic, but not every narcissist is psychopathic. Make sense? There, there's, there's your key difference. A narcissist is somebody who lacks empathy, is grandiose, is entitled, is constantly seeking validation, is arrogant. Um, It's a disorder of self-esteem and they have trouble regulating their self-esteem. But when a narcissist does a bad thing, they feel a fair amount of guilt and shame. More shame than guilt, frankly, because they're concerned about how other people view them. Shame is a public emotion. So they don't like being viewed negatively in the public eye or by other people. That's where the shame comes from. But they'll feel a little bad. Like if they cheat on their wife, I probably shouldn't have done that. Psychopaths are a different animal. They're all of those things except no guilt, no shame. They don't feel remorse when they do something bad. So they're they're great um, serial killers. Oh hired assassins, um, people who are going to go in and literally sort of gut a business. These are your guys. They're like, I don't care, I don't care who gets hurt. Th- they'd say that and they'd mean it. Okay, where a narcissist is like, I hope no one gets hurt. Okay? The difference between the psychopath and the sociopath is the one where most people get confused. Because the sociopath is a lot like the psychopath. They do bad things and they don't care. Okay? Here's the key difference. A psychopath is born and a sociopath is made. Mm. Okay, that's the key. So a psychopath, in fact, we know in the research on psychopathy, which has also been called antisocial personality disorder in our diagnostic manual, these are people who are actually believed to have slightly different autonomic nervous systems. Our autonomic nervous system is actually that part that holds our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight and flight system. So when our autonomic nervous system for a normal person gets charged up, which it would if we broke a rule if we did something embarrassing or rude, if we ran through a red light, our heart starts racing. Mm -hmm. We sweat, our our pupils get wide, we look around because we're afraid of the consequence. A psychopath doesn't have that same kind of arousal. That's why they're able to lie on lie detector tests. That's how they get away with it. They don't have that same kind of arousal. So where you or I may go on a roller coaster, feel that sense of excitement, we need to get that arousal in a good way. We don't like feeling it when we do something wrong. They don't feel it. So do they get stressed? No, not in the same way. So if they're driving, Mm -hmm. because if I'm driving Mm -hmm. and I see police sirens coming behind me, I mean, it is a full on, oh oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm going to get pulled over. But a psychopath would see that and go, oh, I'm going to get pulled over. Cool as could be. They could have a dead body in the trunk and they wouldn't, they wouldn't change. And so they pull over, they get the ticket and they don't care. No, they don't care. And they pay the ticket? If and maybe not, they'll even probably get an attorney to get them off or say, yeah, you know, my understanding of your state laws is you can't really be doing this and they'll be cool as can be. And this is this is a a difference in their they're actually their how makeup. their nervous systems are wired and their brains are. There's actually been interesting research done with PET scans where you can see brain function and what not just shown, to clarification, not pet like dogs and cats, PET, PET yeah, scans. Yes. Positron emission tomography scans yes. of the brain which show brain functioning, if you will, and what they see is that the the section of the brain that serves empathy, that doesn't naturally light up in them. And you can actually teach them to be empathic for a minute, but it doesn't last. A lot of psychopaths who commit violent crimes end up in jail, and the ones who commit more like white collar crimes, I guess they end up as multi-billionaires <laughs> because they're willing to do really, really rough stuff in their business and get through like a cartel leader or something like that, call for the killings of other people. Now, they're interesting um, counterpart are the sociopaths. Psychopaths born, they tend to, the, their belief is that they may very well have, this might be genetic. In fact, psychopaths often have fathers who have lots of antisocial tendencies. Now, how much of it is learned, how much of it is genetic, it's a little bit harder to suss out, but we do see that there is that difference in your true psychopath. They also tend to be, have really glib, shallow charm. They tend to be really intelligent. That's why they get away with stuff. If they were so they've, really they've learned mess. behavior to yeah. assimilate into society. Oh yeah. But there is, it's all a facade. It's all a facade, they're so charming. So if they're born this way, 
would a three-year-old then not get stressed out if it got no. scared? So uh, that's incredible. So what we see when we diagnose antisocial personality disorder, which is sort of our diagnostic equivalent of being a psychopath, in order to get that diagnosis, you have to have shown a pattern prior to the age of 15 of things like truancy, violence towards other kids, stealing, skipping school. And not felt animals, bad about it. Setting fires. They just do it. They don't care. And that before the age of 15, so it's a long-standing pattern, that's what makes us call them a psychopath or having antisocial personality. Now, this is different than sociopathy. Yes, okay. Sociopathy, they look a lot like the psychopaths. The difference is they were made. So this, some examples here. The kid who grows up in a really, 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 really rough neighborhood and learns criminality to get by or learns to be a bully or like, you know, gets involved with sort of like the wrong kids and uses a lot of muscle because that's survivalism. But they, they it's not necessarily always comfortable for them. They just learn it. It's the person who grows up with a father who teaches them the business and teaches them how to break the rules. Um, they, he may But not, they, like, they don't. They would, would they feel, would they start sweating and have their heart race if they, might, they got pulled over? They might. They may, may not feel so good about it. They'll be a little bit more uncomfortable with it, but in time they learn it. And that, that, what, it's almost like they, they get trained in not being as aroused by it. Listen, if you broke enough rules, if you lived under certain conditions of lawlessness long enough, you'd adjust to that new world order, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. That's what the sociopath does. Mm -hmm. And so they're the person who someone who said he was actually a great kid until he got to high school. And then it seems like he got in with the wrong kids. That feels more like the sociopath. Wow. Okay, that's almost like a training that might happen from at the, in, within the family, within their community, within even the job they get, some cases even within some form of military training. Have you had sociopaths and psychopaths as clients? Mm, not really, no. no. They don't come to, tend to come in for therapy. They, they don't see any benefit to it. The only time you would tend to see psychopaths or sociopaths come into therapy with any consistency is if they were court ordered. So I thought you were you know, going to say um, couples therapy. No, God, no, no, no. They, it's because they're court ordered. So the judge will make that a condition of release kind of thing. Or they're within prisons and jails and getting some treatment in there. Th this is so incredibly fascinating to me. If a psychopath goes to jail, he isn't upset about going to jail? Um, it's, in some ways, it becomes a cost of doing business. You know, but it's also, they, no, they're not happy about it. There was, psychopaths and to some degree sociopaths don't think about consequences. That's why they pull really penny ante silly crimes like holding up a liquor store. Basically, I need 150 bucks, here's a liquor store, it's open, let's go get the money kind of thing. So it's like they act first and think later, so they often don't plan in terms of consequences. That's why they have a tendency to lie, cheat, steal, and they tend to have very inconsistent work histories because they, um, they're not able to hold a job. Yeah, aliases. Um, it's definitely like it's more of a griftery kind of a space. So we've talked in previous videos about how to cope mm -hmm. while dating a narcissist. Yeah. If you find yourself dating a sociopath or a psychopath, is there any coping or you just got to get out? You're in trouble. You're I mean, in trouble. That, that could be, actually be a very dangerous It sounds like it. Yeah. In fact, you know, we, and, and to, even with the narcissistic piece, um, I do, uh, I've done research and work in the area of domestic violence or what's also called intimate partner violence. Most people who perpetrate domestic violence are either narcissistic or psychopathic. And so, so there's a danger there. In other words, they will dispose of you if you get in their way. I want to share a story with mm -hmm. you to get your feedback. Mm -hmm. This was told to me by a friend, mm -hmm. and she said in college she dated a guy for a year, mm -hmm. but the guy started to get um, just a little weird and mm -hmm. they broke up. Uh, for the next year, he courted her mm -hmm. and did everything she wished mm -hmm. he had done the first year. Mm -hmm. Showed up on time, brought her gifts blah, blah, blah. They started dating again. He was perfect for a year. Mm -hmm. He, they went to Thanksgiving at her family's house. He was perfect to her parents, just became the perfect mm -hmm. man for her because right. he knew what she wanted. And after a year on the one year anniversary, he broke up with her and said, I've been playing you this whole time because I wanted to crush your heart. Yep. I, I am not actually mm -hmm. behaving this way, mm -hmm. or uh, this isn't real. Yep. I've been faking it for a year just so I can crush you. Yep. Would that be a That's psych more psychopathic? Psychopathic. That's more psychopathic. You know, or sociopathic is more likely. You know, um but if they have no, 
empathy, then why would they want to hurt somebody? Um, because because empathy. Empathy is not, empathy is a positive emotion, okay? Wanting to hurt someone is a very antagonistic emotion. Wanting to hurt someone at some level might even give them a little pleasure. Power, for sure. It's it's interesting to me that someone cannot be empathetic but then want to hurt somebody because to me you would no. have to have the empathy in order to even know what no. it's like to hurt somebody. There's a difference between empathy and understanding. Mm. You can understand what, because if oh. you, it's, it's like, that's why psychopaths that make sense. great salesmen. Because they understand a person, they can read a person and immediately say, I got his vulnerability. I'm going to make him buy a car. Got it. Psychopaths are great salesmen. Got Some it. salesmen for cars, timeshares, all the all that stuff where they're upselling and almost taking advantage of someone sometimes, making them take on more money and cost of something than they really should. But no, no, no. It's that he was able to be superficially charming. Psychopaths and sociopaths and narcissists make great chameleons. They're <sighs> definitely able to change the situation to get what they want. And psychopaths in particular and sociopaths are they they view the world as an instrument to fulfill their desires. Mm. That's really what they're about, which is what it's awful because they're going to often discard a partner when they don't have much use for them or expect them to be, have a very specific role. So they may have married her and she may have had their kids. Now she's going to have to put up with their affairs because they want something else. And too bad if you don't like it. This is the new world order and I will destroy you in court. It's that kind of thing. That is insane. Yeah, it's chilling. It's I chilling. want to leave it right there. I have learned more about sociopaths and psychopaths than I ever thought possible. Make sure you check out as well our discussion about narcissism with Dr. Ramani. Thanks again for Thanks. being here. For more information on all things mental health, make sure you go to medcircle.com. There you can curate your own list of your preferred mental health topics. It'll be delivered to you exactly when you need it. I'm Kyle Kittleson. Thanks for watching.